Christos. Hello, good evening, UK Crime Book Club. We are now live with Trevor Ward. I'm stumbling over my words already. That's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> Introduce yourself, show off your books, and um, and then we'll get on. Oh, man, you didn't tell me to. I've got them handy. Uh, hi, I'm Trevor Wood, um, uh, Newcastle-based writer of gritty crime thrillers set in the homeless community. Um, mm -hmm. First one was The Man on the Street. That's better. Um, the award-winning The Man on the Street, I'm supposed to say now. My publisher tells me off if I don't mention it. Um, don't worry, we'll be mentioning it. <laughs> and the very soon-to-be-published hardback of One Way Street, which is due out mm -hmm. on Thursday, although I have seen it in bookshops already, so it is available <laughs> now. And That's it, I've only got it. I, I've only got yet, two. You? I'm not like Mike Craven, I haven't got 17 Street. books to, to, to publish. <laughs> When will you have a cover reveal for Dead End Street, which is book three? I have been promised it for, um, it, it won't be the reveal yet, but I've been promised to see options um, mm. for about two weeks now and they still haven't appeared. So that, that's either good news or bad news. I don't know. It might be that my editor doesn't like them and she sent them back to the designer, I don't know. But I don't, you know, mm. writers don't get much say in this. I, I, I do talks with the Women's Institute, bizarrely, these days. I don't know, go figure. Um, and I've got a, I've got a picture of the covers that they sent me for One Way Street, and there's, there was about 12 of them. Uh, mm. And they said, pick your three favourites. And I picked like two, six, and nine, and they went for five, I think. Uh, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're supposed to consult me, so that's what they do. They consult me, and then they ignore me completely. And it has, to have, the, has to have the time bridge on. That's, that seems to be a thing. Absolutely. And surely, though, if you hated something, if you were dead against it, they'd have to listen to that. Yeah. Not, they, not yeah. that I'm sure that they do that, you know. I get on very well with my editor. We have a really good relationship. And I think, yeah. I mean, we haven't, I haven't tested that theory out yet. Um, <laughs> and I didn't hate it. I, it was my fourth choice, so I kind of went with it. And I do like it. It's grown on me. It's very moody. Um, yeah, I really like the covers. Yeah, but, but yeah, we'll test that. Maybe I'll just deliberately say, <laughs> I hate that, Jane. And see if she backs down. And if not, I'll know that I've got no sway whatsoever. <laughs> um, we've got that's really made me chuckle. I've opened a can of worms. <laughs> I'm gonna fall um, you. I'll say Sam made me fall out with my editor. I'm never coming back on UK Crime Book. <laughs> I did tell Lucy I'm having a bad day and I'm gonna put my foot in my mouth. So um oh, mixed okay. mouth. I said something. Anyway, um Leslie Lloyd says hello to us both. Hi Leslie. Already Hi guys, nice comments. to see you. Daniel McBreak next says hello. Um, and Joe as well. Joe in Cumber. We love Joe. I think Joe won my last won, won my book last time I was here, I think. I think I'm remembering that rightly. Yeah. I think he did, yeah. He he's won a couple of books. He's been quite lucky. Um I thought it's going dry. Hello, Steve, over in um, California. <laughs> um What Daniel's time is it in California? I don't know, but I'm sure he'll tell us. I am terrible. I couldn't tell you. It must be. I, I'm going to guess it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. That's my best guess. Not got a clue. Not even my, daughter's, my daughter's in Vancouver and they're eight hours behind. And it can't be that much different, I wouldn't think. Joe said good memory, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget giving books away. It pains me, but I never forget <laughs> it. You know? Um. Where are we? TG says hello to us both. Um, Joe says, I know you do a lot of work for the homeless. What tip would you give the general public when wanting to give to homeless on the street? Mm. That's an interesting question. It is. I was I was saying to Sam, I don't, Tuesday afternoons is the afternoon that I work yeah, at you? the People's Kitchen. Um, uh, and as you can imagine, at the moment, it's hot and sweaty um, working in a, in a full kitchen. Mm. Uh, and, and cooking for 240 people and there's only three chefs on a Tuesday afternoon um, so I've, I've rushed back and had a shower and I'm okay now but uh, I'm, I'm a bit still buzzing from doing all that because it's really hard work uh, I'm a bit I, I, I don't kind of toe the party line on this Joe really I'd say give them whatever you want frankly I, I mean I know some people will say you give them money they'll spend it on drugs if I was living on the street, I'd, I'd, I'd spend my money on drugs probably just to make me forget what's going on. 
I've had uh, people you. say about, um, you know, they might just spend it on alcohol, and I've said, well, what do you think I spend my money on? Yeah, exactly. I, so, not today. Yeah. Today it is Coke in my lovely mug that my friend brought there. I tend not to dictate. Uh, talk to them is my first yeah. suggestion. Have a conversation. Treat them like a human being. Yeah. Um, if you want to, go and buy them some food. Nip into Tesco's and get them a pasty or get them a can of Coke or whatever. Um, but engage with them is the most important thing. I think so many people just walk yeah. past them uh, and ignore them. So engage them. Everything else is what you feel comfortable with, I think. Lucy says hello to us both. And Hi, Lucy. Lucy. Hi, Lucy, Lucy again. Gonna, um, <laughs> Lucy's going to tag Andrew Hoochin in for us as well um, because he lives in Nottingham and he likes us to tag it so we can um, he joins in. Okay. Ask us really good questions as well. So we'll say hello to Andrew once he joins us. So um, I'll just quickly ask about a publication day. Oh, no, let's let's do the competition first. Okay. Well, I'm just going to give away a, a signed copy of the new hardback of One Way Street um, to whoever asked the most interesting question tonight. So go for it, guys. Yeah, get your thinking caps on. I mean, I'm not sure I'll give it to Joe again. I mean, it's it's about time he paid for one of my books, I think, really. But we'll see if if he goes interesting, and you know, maybe maybe we'll double up on it. Absolutely. And Lucy's so, already got Lucy's already got it, so I don't need to give it to her. She has, yeah, she definitely has. Now, I've read them both on Kindle, so I've missed a trick because obviously I've not got one to put behind me. And you did offer to send me a book, which I was very grateful for, but I already had it, so. Catch twenty two, but I'll think that's good news for other people, spot. though, Sam. It means I have one more to give away at some point. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, my brother's here <laughs> as well. Ah, so Kevin Wood. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> um, good evening. My question is, when is your brother's copy arriving? I'm not going to try and do the winky face with the tongue stuck out, as amusing as that would be. It's in the post, Kev. It's in the post. It, it, it isn't. But is that it, like Del Boy's tax disc is in the post? Yeah, absolutely. It's the same as the check. Really random question, which is nothing to do with books, but I was wondering, do you ever get a hint of a Newcastle accent? <laughs> Does it not come out no matter what emotion you feel? I do. I, do I, I quite like to say divent now and again, um, right. uh, just, just to annoy my wife, really. Uh, <laughs> But no, I don't. Honestly, I, my my wife is a Geordie. My daughter was born here, um, and and it's not good when I try. It's not pretty. I can write it bizarrely. I feel very you comfortable can write writing it. Really it. Very, well. very comfortable writing it. Um, but yeah, I can't. It's not right, is it? Really. <laughs> there was some words I could, no, I I, to write if, down, but if I had two two or three more beers, you might get me to try it later on. But I'm not going to do that. Oh, I wouldn't put you in that position. If you decide <laughs> suddenly you want to try and burst into an accent, then by yeah, all no, means, that's not going to happen. You too. <laughs> I wouldn't put you in that position. No, Lucy says you can't get rid of her that easily, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get her awesome questions for free tonight. Excellent. Okay, I am. Um, I'm really disappointed to find out that Jimmy's part of a trilogy, which means the rebooks. Really? Are we not going to get any more after Dead End Street? <laughs> no, no, well, you know, um, no, it's the first answer. Um, uh, followed by, you know, you never say never, really. Um, <laughs> I was, I, I, it's tricky, isn't it? I wrote The Man on the Street as a standalone novel. I, I mm. never had any thought it was going to be a series of any kind. Um, it's about a homeless man who sees a murder and nobody believes him. That, that's a one trick pony really as far as I was concerned um, and I was really surprised that when we were out on submission I mean I was out on submission for ever for like eight months without any offers at all um, mm. if it hadn't been for the the faith and perseverance of Ollie Munson my agent I think um, I, we wouldn't be having this conversation now really because it would have been buried I've had friends whose books were out on submission for that long and their agents just said well go and write another book because nobody wants this one um, but Ollie kept going and the editors who did like it said look it's a series it's not a standalone and I was like but it's a homeless guy and they were saying yeah but people will like the characters and they'll want to see them mm. again um, and I was worried about authenticity that the for me the 
key point of the books is that they're reasonably authentic, that they're kind of real. And I, you can't genuinely have a homeless guy going around solving crimes year after year for 10 years that the police can't solve or, or aren't interested in solving or whatever. I think it's it would kind of take away from the uniqueness of the books, really. Mm. So I was ultimately persuaded to do a limited series. And, and the thing that persuaded me really is that in The Man on the Street, I Jimmy is always going to be the main protagonist, but in The Man on the Street, we get his backstory. We find out why he's living on the streets, what's happened to him to put him in that position. And I, and I realised that I could live with three more stories and I could see how to tell a couple more stories, provided I could tell the backstories of his two sidekicks, if you like. So in, in One Way Street, although Jimmy is the main protagonist, we get Dino's story. I love Dino. And in, <laughs> good. And in Dead End Street, we get Gadget's I story. I like him a lot. <laughs> We've, it's, I've seen Ian Rankin has said the same thing. When he wrote the first Rebus book, he threw everything into it because he thought he was writing a, a one-off book. So mm. he put loads of stories about Rebus and his history and things like that in. And then he's had to write another, God knows how many, 30 books, and he's said he wished he'd <laughs> held stuff back. And I feel a bit the same, though, there was so much in the first book that I think if I'd have known, I would have kind of held some of it back. And it also, I hadn't really set it up to be to, for there to be any more books. So I've had to kind of work with the stuff that I put in the first book about Dino and Gadge and just build from there, yeah. um, which has been fascinating and really interesting to do. But of course, it, it, I'm, I, I'm writing a trilogy and I've got the three main characters and I've done those. So... And I also I subscribe to um, it's a bit it's a bit weird this but I really like the classic TV stuff like Faulty Towers and The Office where mm -hmm. John Cleese and Ricky Gervais said right two series and we're done that's it and it kind of gives it a bit of mythology and it kind of people go oh my god let's have some more and they go no we're we're done that's that's exactly right mm -hmm. and I'm going to play on that for a while and see if I can get away with it and then <laughs> of course if my fourth standalone book um, fails miserably, then then we'll see how strongly I feel about it after that, maybe. See, after what I've read so far, I'm not seeing that happening. No pressure. <laughs> I did, uh, yeah, I enjoyed... Uh, I've just finished copy editing um, the third one, Dead End Street. I think it's completely done now. Um, I don't think I'll see it again until it comes out. And I've started the fourth one. And it is. I, I am enjoying writing some new characters, some new people. So we'll see how that goes. Well, when I was talking to Mike Craven the other day, he said that Mark Billingham had said to him, throw in a standalone every once in a while. It keeps it fresh and it stops you getting bored as well. Yeah, I think so that's really good. Advice. Before we convince you to write more, Jimmy. <laughs> I think whatever Mark Billingham says is probably true. He knows his stuff. I would probably agree, yeah. Other than his views on toast. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know... Don't I'm not sure. I did, I, I'm sure I did see something about his views on toast, but I can't remember what it was. Anymore. He thinks that you have to let toast go cold. And oh, yeah, no, it. that's terrible. No, it's shocking. Absolutely awful. I, I just can't. It might, it might have put me off him slightly. So just a little bit. Um, Leslie Lloyd wants to know if Jimmy's going to become a proper PI. Well, that's a good question. But, bit of a I mean, plot spoiler, Leslie. Bit of a it, plot but... spoiler. Um, I, I I I don't think I can answer that without without. Fair enough. Spoiling. I will move swiftly YouTube on. Up. Sorry, Leslie. I'm. Um, no, stop. Maybe. Talking. No, kind of, stop. No. I mean, there's a clue. I'm only writing three books, so you know. Um. T wants to know which of your book characters would you like to take for a walk or have a holiday with. It's a play on one of her other favourite questions. Oh, is it? I I yeah. absolutely. 100% say Sandy, my probation officer in the books. I absolutely love writing her. She's an incredibly feisty, gobby woman. She just tells it how it is. And... <laughs> Which is my kind of favourite kind of women, really. Um, uh, she's kind of model on my wife, but don't tell her that. She's not listening to this. <laughs> Fine, I can get away with it. Um, so, yeah, definitely her, Sandy, definitely. The first time we met her in One Way Street, I just remember guffawing. 
<laughs> I love. I, she shouldn't get as many chapters as she does, really. But I just now and again I go. I'm, I just, I'm a bit bored now. I want to get Sandy back in and just just write one chapter with her. Great. I can almost feel the look she gives Jimmy a lot. <laughs> the the first time I wrote her, I just thought she's going to smoke in her office. I don't care what the laws are. She's just going to sit by the window, blowing smoke out the window and not giving a shit. Frankly, I'm. It just seems such a great character note. It just came to me immediately. Really. We've got so many questions. And I know, I've it's really cool. I hope you can catch questions. up with them, Sam, because I'm, I'm lost. They are scrolling a little bit quickly, but um, Joe's saying he always asks interesting questions. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite and least favourite part of the writing process? Asks Joe. Do you have a favourite bit? I really quite like editing actually I'm a very I'm not a planner so so I have to do a lot of editing so mm. so I just can't I literally do make it up as I, I, I go along and, and now and again I mean there are many benefits to that and I think the freshness and a certain surprise element to what happens comes it into it but it does mean well. does mean that now and again you get to a point and you go oh that thing I wrote 10 chapters ago makes no sense anymore because of this so i have to go back and work on it but i quite like doing that i quite like kind of chipping away i can't remember who it was somebody somebody suggested that writing a book was a bit like sculpting that you start with a big block of a block I of clay and you that. chip bits away and by yeah. the time you've done all that you end up with a story and that's a bit like how i do it i kind of I, I believe the story is already there in my head somewhere, but I have no idea what it is, and I kind of chip away at it until it appears. Somebody suggested to me that I do plan, but that my first draft is my plan. I literally kind of <laughs> make it up, and I get to the end of the first draft and go, all right, that's what the story is, and then I craft it into something that makes sense. And I think that's probably close. And I'll see but that's, so that's my favourite bit, Joe. I think editing is my favourite yeah. bit. I don't have that's a least favourite bit. I What's not to like about being a writer? I don't, anybody who complains about it is mad. It's <laughs> great. You, you just make stuff up and, you know, hopefully somebody reads it. It's a joy that people read it and want to talk about it. Uh, there's no downside at all. Mm -hmm. Being out on submission for nine months, I don't like being out on submission and not having a deal. <laughs> but hopefully I might not have to do that again for a little while. I would imagine so. I mean, people have read your stuff. I don't think you're going to be hanging around for much. Hope not. I know Stephen King's the one who talks about digging up something as a, it's a whole thing and you dig it up slowly, but I can't think who it is. Surely somebody will have seen that quote doing the oh, yeah, I've, now. I've lost Oh, Joe's one. got one of his favourite questions. What are you drinking? Mine is uh, Coke in, a, in my lovely mug that my friend got. I'm me. drinking um, Brewdog Punk IPA. Uh, and sadly, I've run out. I should have brought two yes. bottles with me. Rookie mistake, man. <laughs> I know, I know. It's very poor. <laughs> I'll be drummed out of the Geordie Nation for that. Um, you will be, no yeah. The Mancunian's not so happy with you, to be fair, and she's not <laughs> even drinking. Um, Leslie said it has got legs for a longer series, so we're clearly not letting up on you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I never say never leslie that's all that's that's all i've got really i will see how book four goes and see how i feel after that i pitched um i pitched a rom-com to my agent the other day and he nearly passed out i think we'll see <laughs> i don't you know i'm old you've got. I'm not, i don't know how long i've got left to do this i'm 62 for christ's sake i can't you're a whippersnapper yeah but you know my memory's shot away i'm not sure how much longer i can keep doing this my memory is terrible. Who are you again? <laughs> That's what I say to my kids and they don't laugh either. Um, texting friends with possible questions to Trevor to see if they're interesting enough, says Steve. So he's, he's asking his friends input because he wants to win the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew from Nottingham says, glad to be on board and congratulations on winning the award. Um, I have a copy of The Man on the Street. Began it last night and I think it's great. Andrew, you're in for a treat. It's a fantastic book. Thank okay, you. awards. Have we got enough time for this conversation? I think you'll be fine, Sam. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> so go on. Latest award. Is um, Step Save is the latest one? Is this um, rather sweet uh, blue one. bars? It is Crime Fest. Oh, I know. Wow. 
Congratulations. I was, you know, I was up against Richard Osman. This is, I can't believe I've got this. When they sent me the email, I got an email the next day saying, uh, oh, we've got a problem. And I was fairly certain it was them going, we sent that to you by mistake. We should have sent it to Mr. Osman. Um, forget about it. But it, it was another problem. They made a mistake on the on the, on the the engraving on the vase. Shh, don't tell anybody I told you that. I'm, I'm sure it's supposed we, to be We wouldn't dream of it. Uh, but yeah, that was amazing. I, I didn't expect that at all. Uh, it was great to be on the shortlist. Um, when I saw Richard Osman was on there, he sold 70 billion million copies. I just thought, <laughs> oh, well, it was nice to be on the list. So yeah, it was great to get the award. And you've had a lot of awards. I've only had two, Sam. Let's not push it. I've got this one. No, there's, there's all the I keep, I keep them all close, mentioned. as you can see. This this is probably my favourite yeah. trophy. Look at that. Because it's got an actual dagger and it's yeah, really it's solid. So detailed. I mean, honestly. Yeah, it's great. That. <laughs> and that was the first one, so that was nice. I don't think I'm going to get the Thigston's Crime Novel of the Year award, but, but you know, you never say. But you didn't think you were going to get the last two, did you? Oh, you've gone quiet, Sam. I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me? Right. How about now? No, no, no? sound. No sound. How very strange, okay? I wonder why. Try different ones. Is that any better? No? Can everybody else hear me? Can somebody let me know if you can hear me, please? Oh, Lucy can hear as well, too. Lucy's good. So... How very strange. Okay, it's um. Can you hear Trevor? <laughs> Why can't I hear Sam? No, Shall I, I go out and come control. back in again? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for letting me know that you can hear me. I genuinely thought my um ears can. can show off. Look, we've got. We've got Ben and Kath and Will, so Ben Bruce, um, Kath Middleton, Will Templeton, Criminal Shorts, of course. There's some recommendations for you while we're waiting. And also, um, my next my next interview, we've got others in between, is Caroline England, Truth Games. So um, keep an eye out for those. And just in case something went a bit wrong, I've got Peter James, Graham Bartlett, The Real CSI. I've got Brian Caves, A Long Way From Home, my favourite book last year. I've got Her Last Holiday, which is Kelly Taylor. You've got some great recommendations here. And because he likes more of him and less of everybody else, we've got Mike Craven. There you go. It's almost like a practice that I really haven't. Told you something would go wrong, Lucy. I said there was going to be some waffle. So, Jimmy, in, oh, we are back. Hold on. Let's see if you can hear me. Can you hear me, Trevor? I can hear you again. Thank you. I've just done a little um, a little rundown of all the books that are around me. And I just started to talk about Jimmy and then you came back. Okay. Let's <laughs> hope it's hope it stays good now. So I've just given everybody a few more recommendations on top of yours. So there we go. <laughs> I tidied up and everything. It's a really good job. <laughs> um, your brother wants to know, can we have a spin-off starring Sandy the probation officer? So Kaz quite likes to ask that. Would you ever write a novella about certain characters? Uh, not a novella. I could see a short story, maybe. Yeah. I really, I really struggle to write short stories. I've only written two in my life, um, and the first one, Val McDermott asked me. To, she was doing an anthology um, for the homeless World Cup. There, apparently, there's a homeless World Cup where little teams of um, five-a-side homeless um, teams from all over the world compete. But of course, they haven't been able to do that at all. Yeah. Uh, so they Val, Val put together an anthology and asked me to write a short story and I was like I can't say no it's Val McDermott um, <laughs> no. and I really struggled but I wrote a short story that is the story of when Jimmy first meets Dog um, it's called Underdogs and in fact if you subscribe to my website you get a copy for nothing which is what I was going to say because <laughs> I did just that the other day so oh, did I got you? the story I really enjoyed that but I that was the only way I could write a short story because I couldn't come up with anything and I just had to go back to the book and go, what haven't I talked about? And that was a nice little <laughs> little story. Um, 
Uh, and I've just written another one for the, um, I can't remember what they're calling it. You know, the Afraid of the Lights series. So we've had Afraid of the Lights, uh, Afraid of the Christmas yeah, Lights. Yeah, and there's now going to be a Halloween one. Um, and I can't think what it's going to be called. No, Afraid of know, the but At least something. I'm not in it, so you um, should know. <laughs> I have written a short story for that. Um, I haven't yet heard from Miranda, the editor, whether she likes it or not. So we'll see. Um, and it does feature the one of the characters from my standalone book it was like a practice for me. I wanted to see if I could write uh, a character and I tried it for that. Uh, we'll see if she comes back to me now and says, oh no, this is rubbish. I've got a problem for my standalone book. <laughs> Not if she says this is rubbish, but we really like the character. <laughs> that, that would be all right. That would be all right. Fine. <laughs> Um, Leslie wants to know if you're a chef by training because lots of people, it's a lot of people to cook for. She struggles to six. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Um, part of the deal, before I started writing crime novels, I wrote for the theatre. I co-wrote about a dozen plays with a, a friend of mine, um, which entailed me giving up my reasonably good job at the city council as a head of communications. Um, and part of the deal with my wife for doing that was I would do not only the writing, but all the childcare um, and all the household stuff, uh, which mm -hmm. included all the cooking. I already did most of it, but um, but it meant I became kind of the full-time cook in the house, really. Uh, so all my skills are pretty much self-taught. Uh, and I did do a little tiny um, online training thing about uh, food hygiene and stuff to mm. work at the kitchen, but, but the rest of it is just um, making it up as we go along. It's great fun, actually. It's a bit like MasterChef. We kind of have the vaguest idea what we might cook, but we just turn up and look at what we've got and, and crack on from there. So we literally turn up at 2 o'clock, and by 6 o'clock, we've cooked a, a three-course meal for 200 people. Wow. It's great fun. So less Hell's Kitchen, more MasterChef. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's very Good. creative. We're very competitive. We like to think the Tuesday team do the best food, you know. And, in fact, there's an in-joke in the book, I think. I think one of the guys says... We only go there on Tuesdays because it's the best food. <laughs> I have not picked up on that, but um, <laughs> but that's yeah, that's funny. So Andrew, let us know when you get to that bit of um, once you get through the books. I don't even know which one that's from. Where have you made the joke? Is that oh, England, the trouble is when you do these, Sam? You know, you just finished book ago. three. Yeah, and book two was ages ago. I, I'm pretty sure it's in book two because. Somebody's already mentioned it to me. Somebody who works at the kitchen on a different right, night, okay. I think, and went, "Oh yeah, I've seen what you said about Tuesday." <laughs> I do like the I do like the odd in joke in the books. It's you know keeps you yeah, entertained. I think that's good. There were some words that I wanted to write down because I have a rule: if I'm going to interview an author, I will not Google what a word means. I'll ask them because I just think it's more fun. But no, I asked Mike about wobbly eggs the other day. That was a oh yeah, I one. I answered that on the on the. UK Crime Book Club page because I've, yeah. I've obviously given that I'm writing about the homeless I've had to do quite a bit of research into the drug scene um, as well mm. and in fact One Way Street is all about spice epidemic really yeah which is a horrendous I mean yes. you don't, I don't one of the questions that I wrote down beforehand was about gritty scenes because I, I, I'm not going to bring up any specific scenes because there's things that if we talked about a certain scene and something that's happened to a certain person, then it would it would be a spoiler. Yeah, so okay. let's just do a generalisation of there's some really, really harsh things, things that we know have happened in real life. That's got to be quite a difficult thing to write about. I didn't want to um, sugarcoat the experience, if you like. Yeah. I didn't want to write a kind of Disney version of the homeless society it's pretty rough but you there, also it? don't glorify it for your own ends it's a really no. tricky balance that you walk beautifully thank you uh, yeah it's 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 hard and yeah you don't want you don't want to get it wrong either way really you've yeah. got to do justice to it i think and it, it it would be ridiculous to kind of paint it as as some kind of happy-go-lucky life where they're all just knocking about and and you know telling each other jokes and having quite a nice life because clearly they're not and pretty much everybody who's out there has had some kind of trauma. Um, mm. You know, it could be it's, it's something as simple as losing their jobs or, or their marriage breaking up. Um, but in, in many cases, it's much worse than that. And 
Mm -hmm. And if you kind of shy away from that, you're not really doing your job, I think. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not that easy to write about, but I think it was necessary, really. It's it the same with well. swearing. I get I get the odd review going. Oh my God, there's a lot of swearing in this, and I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, what do you expect, really? Yeah. These guys are living on the street. If you think they're not going to swear, I, I, I have no idea what world you're living in, really. And if you're not, if you're okay. You're not okay with the swearing, but you're okay with everything else. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't get it, frankly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, it, people, you know, can make their own choices. I don't, it's fine. The um, one other thing, though, that you do really well, you do lots really well, but the, the relationships between people. So, yes, they might bicker and they might have a horrible time and things happen, but you've also got these incredible friendships. And they're yeah. not... They're not holding hands and braiding each other's hair, but there's there's good banter and there's camaraderie. And they might I'm just be... I'm just trying to imagine right in the hair braiding scene. now. that would be funny. Yeah, yeah well, there's you know yeah, you, yeah, fit that into one of them. They do have integrity uh, and they have loyalty a, a, as much as anybody, really. You know, um, and they do create friendships. And of course, yeah, there there's the odd complete dickhead out there who just causes chaos and carnage. Um, and you know, at the kitchen, we've got we've got like a notice board full of photos of people that aren't allowed to come anywhere near the place because they're too disruptive. But but by and large, they look out for each other. Um, and I wanted to capture that as well, just because they're on the streets and they're desperate and they haven't got much, mm. doesn't mean they don't share what they've got when they can. I think. Um, yeah. So yeah. Just that thing of how well you write, just friendships in general, not homeless friendships, just friendships that banter and and you know just people getting to know each other thank you i just yeah i've enjoyed them immensely and i can't wait for book three <laughs> and i am going to hand you for book four um, <laughs> and and know that lucy and leslie now are going to join in <laughs> uh, we already know that you're going to harrogate so joe's asked that i'm going oh, to harrogate about that on if there's no harrogate sam i'm still going to harrogate i'm going to harrogate regardless we have I don't agreed. Think we my, about that before we went live, and I'm just yeah, thinking the audio. Yeah. No, so go on, you tell my, us. My gang and I have had a house book since last year. We put it back to this year. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to Harrogate with Harriet Tice, um, uh, Kate Simmons, who are both on my MA course, and uh, Louise Hare, who wrote a brilliant book called My Lovely City. Um, haven't read it, but I have heard of it. Yeah, who's part of my debut 20 group. The four of us <laughs> are, have rented the house. We're going. I don't care whether they're doing Harrogate on, <laughs> on computers, whether they're doing it live, whatever, we will be in Harrogate. So if you're going, we'll see you in the pub. Oh, my word. This year is going to be um, interesting. I know so many people who are just going anyway. It's just that Harrogate is going to happen regardless of whether Harrogate says it's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> we'll do readings in the in the park. I don't, it's going to happen. I like the sound of that. <laughs> I think that'd be better, almost. <laughs> Um, Daniel wants to know, um, he says, in the acknowledgements in One Way Street, you mentioned other authors, authors from your writing course, which, of course, you've just touched on. Mm -hmm. Have you got a favourite book from one of these authors or one you think deserves more recognition? Daniel, what are you doing? Why did I read that out before I read it? That is brutal, I mean. Daniel. That is brutal. Um, <laughs> yeah, go on. I, I, I don't Look, Harriet is, is a brilliant mate of mine. She's coming. I'm doing a kind of informal launch in Newcastle on Thursday and Harriet is coming up from London despite the fact that it's not even a proper launch um, just oh. to have a beer and heading back the next day so she's a great mate of mine um, but her blood orange doesn't need any more shouting out about it it's done well enough um, my other really good mate from the course Kate Simance um, has two books out and her book A Ruined Girl which she developed on the MA had a different title then um, mm. is fantastic she's a brilliant writer so so if you haven't read A Ruined Girl by Kate Simmons, get on it, because it's wonderful. Excellent. Oh, Lucy says cold toast with butter and marmite. Get in Club Billingham. No. Lucy, you're off the team, frankly. Yeah. You're off the team. That's that's not yeah. right. Um, oh, so Andrew says he first saw you on YouTube mentioning your book and how you help, help in the kitchens, and he thinks that's fantastic. So which we all do. You've got quite the fan base in um, UK Crime Book Club and beyond. 
Uh, I'm incredibly grateful to anybody who even reads my book, let alone says great things about it. It's, you know, when you're writing these things, you think if five people read it, I'll be chuffed to bits. Um, I, I just, I try to engage with readers all the time because I, it never gets tired talking mm -hmm. about my book to people who want to talk about it because it's, you know, otherwise it's a silence out there. I have friends who've sold five copies and nobody wants to talk to them. Uh, why talk, wouldn't you want to talk to readers? I, I just... I, <laughs> I'll talk to anybody who writes. I'll just book, honestly, you could. Brand. If you said this ran till ten o'clock, I'd still be here chatting. Probably, I don't. <laughs> don't I don't present a single second of it. Where's the best place that you've seen your book? Because obviously, it might not be you physically seeing it somewhere, but have you had a, a picture sent to you from somewhere that you think, oh, whoa, um, that's a really good question. I'll try. Give me a mic. Come back to me. I'll, I'll okay. think about that one. Absolutely. I'm, I'm writing it down here so I don't forget because <laughs> I'm old and if I don't write shit down, I forget. it's just gone. I've got about 17 notebooks and I'm not kidding. They're everywhere. Notes are everywhere. Oh, I tell you, actually, no, why don't I? Okay. It's, it's not really a place, but yesterday a guy, a lovely guy called Glenn Maltman, who's a musician in the Northeast, who I've never met at, at mm. all. He's just engaged because he liked the book so much. Um, he's also a huge Star Wars fan and he posted a photo yesterday of him in a stormtrooper's outfit reading the man on the street. I have not seen that. I'm going to go and look for it. Though. It's on. It's definitely on Twitter. I think um, it. It was surreal, and I'm just like, oh, that will do. I'll take that. And I do bizarrely actually have a friend, an actor, Scott Fraser, who is also coming to my Newcastle launch. Who played a stormtrooper in in the last but one Star Wars movie. Um, and has been beaten to the punch holding my book dressed as a stormtrooper, which is a bizarre coincidence. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that. Sorry, it's not a place, but, you know. Yeah, it's a no, good that's photo. great. I just, and yeah, any kind of, you know, any way that you've, you've seen a photograph of your book is great. <laughs> uh, my cousin had stormtroopers and Darth Vader at her wedding. Oh, really? And she surprised wow. her husband with, um, oh, what is the theme tune? I oh, don't even, I have no idea. Anyway, I'm not even, I'm not even a big him. fan. Am I allowed to say that out loud? I'm really Star Wars, you know, it's for kids, isn't it? I, I've, I've seen bits. Me and Mike got onto this the other day. I've seen bits. I'm not, let's move on before we get lynched. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, is it The Empire Strikes Back? Is that what I'm thinking of? That's, anyway, that's, they did something okay. as they were leaving the church. That's what Lee got to surprise him. His face was a picture. Is it like some bit of classical music, isn't it? A march, a march of some kind. I, I don't say. I'm not. I, I really don't watch it. <laughs> Lucy wants to know: Is the upcoming standalone novel also set in Newcastle? Uh, not quite. It's set in Northumberland. Um, okay. Set in a very remote Northumberland village, which I haven't quite tracked down yet. I've. It's, it's really nice research, actually. Just wandering around. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to walk a lot, so going out into Northumberland and wandering around. Uh, has been great fun and I'm trying to find a village that fits <laughs> my imagination as to what this mm. village looks like um, otherwise I'm going to have to make it up I'm going to have to fictionalize it but I'd really like to find a very small village that has about 25 houses and one mm. street that goes through the middle of it um, and that's about it really you'd think it would be easy wouldn't Ooh. you but I don't know I haven't quite found one I might one be able perfect. to recommend a couple you could look at on Google Earth and see more local to me than you, though. Yeah, it's got to be Northumberland. I've got to. It's got to be northeast. Has to be. Mm, yeah, I'm northwest. So I've got one or two. I'm still. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm there gonna. Might be somebody watching who can recommend somewhere. So yeah. We'll see if anything comes up. About twenty-five houses, one street through the middle, possibly a big house on the outskirts somewhere, um, and quite remote. That's all I need. It's quite simple. Intriguing. <laughs> Not much to ask. I've got a pitch. I could read the pitch out. Oh, go on. I, I deliberately actually put it up on the screen because I thought Have you Have you read ask... this out to anybody before? Are we no, exclusive? never. No, Yay. this is a UK Crime Book Club exclusive. It says, it's only four paragraphs, so it's not terribly long. 15-year-old Ruby Winters is surprised when her quiet, reclusive father invites a stranger into their house. Intrigued, she creeps down the stairs to listen in and is alarmed when she hears a fight break out. She dashes into the kitchen to save her dad, but it's not him that needs her help. It's the stranger he's just stabbed who's bleeding out on their kitchen floor. Refusing her pleas to call an ambulance, he urges her to pack a bag they have to run. 
but from what? When her father is shot trying to escape, Ruby finds herself in hiding with no idea why her quiet life has exploded. It must be something to do with his past, but what? With the help of bad boy Lucas and some of the local elders, she tries to evade capture, find her father, and piece together the real story of her life. But as the dead man's colleagues lay siege to her small village, she slowly comes to realise it wasn't her dad they were after in the first place, it was her. It's quite good, that, isn't it? I quite like that That's pitch. really good. My editor, um, my contract for my fourth book just said to be negotiated. Um, so I had to persuade her that I was going to write a book. And I hate writing synopses. I don't know if anybody out there writes them at all, but I can't write them. I hate writing the story at the start. It sounds awful and it's just boring. Uh, and she saw me tweeting about it and she emailed me and said, I don't need a synopsis, just send me a pitch. So I sent her that pitch and she said, yeah, just write it, get on with it. That sounds so good. Um, yeah, first in line, I'll buy a copy. <laughs> it's, so far, it's called You Can Run, dot, mm. dot, dot, possibly. Um, uh, but whether that sticks or not, because we don't get much say in the titles either. So, you know. Right, everyone can form an orderly queue behind me. <laughs> um, I'm really, that's, yeah, I'm really intrigued by that. And I've got all kinds of ideas about why she might be okay if you want to pass them on sam because i make this up as a go along i haven't got a clue what's going on <laughs> actually right, that's not true on this occasion don't go with the first four for the first advice. time ever in history i actually kind of have a fair idea of what's going on and where the story's heading wow i just haven't written it down it's all in my head somewhere next time you're interviewed for us you'll have to tell us whether your initial idea and the finished product are anything like each other Okay, fair, fair question. <laughs> the answer will be no, like, like almost. Probably like. not, no. I mean, the man on the street um, underwent a drastic rewrite while while out on submission. Um, there was an editor who was really keen on it, but he couldn't persuade his sales team that it was the right book. And he asked me to do quite a big rewrite on it um, to get it past them. And I did it, and it still didn't get past them. Um, so I ended up with a drastically different book really completely different main villain um uh completely different endings for some of the characters uh gadge died in the first version of the man no. on the street <laughs> no. well as soon as they told me they wanted a series i was like well he's not dying i'm bring, bringing him back straight away <laughs> so he was resurrected in the second draft of no it. i know the horror no <laughs> no <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Um, no. <laughs> uh, Joe wants to know if you've got the brew dog tattoo yet. So do you know the story behind the no. brew dog? No, what is that? Um, apparently, if you get a brew dog tattoo, you get 20% off. Really? Wow, it's tempting. Mike Craven decided it wasn't worth it, and I said it depends how much you spend. It could well be worth it. There's a lot of good beer out there. I don't. I wouldn't like to commit to one really. Which leads nicely into one of the things that I always think is just brilliant. I know you've not been able to do it as much. Um, you've got another hobby. <laughs> bars of the world. Bars of the world. <laughs> so, how many countries? How many bars? What's the oh god, talent? endless. I mean, the one thing that that Pam and I like to do is travel, which has obviously been almost impossible yeah. um, in the last 15 months, although we did sneak away to Canada um, uh, in the middle of the, the kind of relaxation of lockdown, we managed to get there. Um, for those who don't know, my daughter is, is now lives in Canada. Um, she went there to study to do um, a master's. She's just finished that, but she's now got a place on a PhD, which is about six years. So she's going to be out there for quite some time. Uh, and we've been out there loads in the past. My wife's an academic, so she um, occasionally gets a chance to do a sabbatical so she can go somewhere for, say, three months and work. Uh, and obviously, I can work anywhere, so I just tend to follow her about. Um, so we've travelled a lot. So, yeah, Bars of the World has been great fun. I've, done, I've been all over, really. And I was in the Navy for 16 years before that, so so I've travelled a lot. Um, and it's the, it, I've missed it as I was going to say more than anything, but I've, I've, I'm a huge music fan and I've missed live music the most, I think. Mm. Um, but travelling is a, an easy second, I think. 
Do you have a favourite bar or is that like asking your favourite book? I d actually, I do. And I, I, sadly, I don't have the T-shirt on. But one of our one of Pam's sabbaticals um, fairly recently, only about three years ago, was in, in Ottawa or Ottawa, as the locals mm -hmm. call it. Um, and we just found a local neighbourhood bar called Quinn's, um, which was a bit like Cheers in that you just went there and sat at the bar. Um, and the barman's a really cool <laughs> guy um, uh, with dreadlocks uh, called Kieran, a big kayaking fan, who posts pictures of him kayaking with a cat. He's got a cat that he takes kayaking that sits on the front of his boat. That's how cool he is. Uh, and he's also a DJ, makes his own music. Uh, and every time we went there, the people at the bar were different, were completely different people, and we just felt like locals very quickly. Uh, and went there every Friday night, and it stayed open until the last person was willing to leave really and mm. i just loved it and kieran after we came back i noticed they were making t-shirts with the bar on and kieran sent me one from canada which was lovely oh. so quinn's in in ottawa old yeah. ottawa south it's lovely <laughs> i mean it looks rank outside honestly you probably walk past it and go i'm not going in there uh, but it's a lovely bar proper <laughs> neighborhood bar they're always the best ones. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody wants to go in. And I do love that North American thing of just sitting at the bar and chatting, um, mm. which you don't get quite so much in the UK, I think, now and again, but not very often. I was, um, I was a barmaid for quite a long time on and off, and that's some of the most fun you have, standing at the bar talking to people. Yeah, it's lovely. Really nice. Yeah. Soon. There are many we'll be things doing I soon. don't miss about working in a bar, but that would be one of the things that would be high up there. <laughs> um, where is that question? Steve wants to know, what's the most interesting thing you've learned from a book recently? Whoa. That is an interesting question. Oh, see, Steve is in California. He's the one who's texting his friends saying, is this <laughs> question any good? And we've just both gone, hmm. What's the most interesting thing I've learned from a book recently? God, I read so much. I tell you, actually, yeah, this will this will do. I'm reading. Um, oh man, you're gonna ask me what it's called now. It's. I think I'm pretty sure it's called "Say Goodbye When I'm Gone," uh, and it's okay. written by Stephen J. Golds, who I'm doing the I'm doing the blood brothers am i allowed to publicize other podcasts oh yeah please go for it we, um, what we did i told um chris and rob and um i don't really have told sean this i don't really know sean at all but um i did say we kept the date open all so right we kept our calendar right. free so that we could advertise it okay i'm we doing will. if we know the thing coming up we, we i'm do doing do the that. blood brothers um festival uh on hold on where's 12th? my calendar it's, it's on, on saturday, saturday i think yeah four o'clock on the 12th yeah. um and Stephen Golds is on that panel. And um, when I did a Northern Crime Syndicate thing, Rob Parker chose it as his favourite book of the year. Uh, and I hadn't read it. And I was chatting to Stephen about the panel on Twitter. And he said, oh, do you want, do you want me to send you a copy? Uh, and he, he just emailed me a copy of it. And I'm about 75% through that. And it's brilliant. But um, it's kind of set in a, a lot set in Japan and other bits are set in Hawaii um uh, and i've been to hawaii on one of my many travels in fact again following pam around to a conference it's not uh, a bad life. and the fascinating thing about hawaii is is how many japanese there are i mean they take japanese currency in the stores but then you think about pearl harbor and the mm. fact that the the japanese blew the crap out of of uh, a large chunk of hawaii uh and stephen's book kind of dwells a little bit on the Japanese influence in Hawaii. And it's amazing, I think, mm. that that happened. Um, and and I read a bit of about it because I was reading Stephen's book and I thought, but how did what happened in the war? Because there were the Japanese have been there for a hundred years or more. Uh, and apparently in the rest of America, you know, they interned quite a lot of um, uh, Japanese people because they were worried that they might be spies. But they couldn't do that on Hawaii because there's so many of them. They form most of the economy. So they had to kind of just go, oh, sure, it'll be all right. There won't be spies. It'll be fine. So they just carried on as normal. It's, it, so that kind of, I didn't learn that from the book, but it made me kind of read up a bit more about it and find out what happened. And it's a very, very, very good book. I recommend it highly. And if you look, at the, if you look on Twitter, there's a poster for the Blood Brothers panel. 
and it looks like the usual suspects poster there's like four mean and moody blokes like growling at the camera and there's me going hi hello. <laughs> uh, i could i didn't get the memo i had to frown and look look angry <laughs> what's it who's will carver's on there have you seen he never smiles <laughs> maybe i'll make him smile when we do the festival who knows lucy's asked a really interesting question now we did talk beforehand and i said you know is there anything you kind of would touch on wouldn't touch on which i always ask people and you said you're an open book so have any of the people who use the people's kitchen read your books and given you their thoughts on how you've portrayed their lives yeah it's been fantastic actually i, I it's obviously a massive concern if you're representing absolutely the homeless world if you like and you don't get it right there are a lot of people um, that hover around the people's kitchen who would be prepared to tell me that i didn't get it right at all and they've been incredibly supportive um which has been fantastic uh so i i haven't had a single bit of feedback from anybody that says this bit's not right uh, and the same with the ptsd as well which again was something i really wanted to get right um and I've told this story many times, but I I got a lot of my information from a, a another book that I always keep to hand, The Veteran's Survival Guide, written by a guy called Jimmy Johnson, as you can see, um, who is ex-army, uh, served in Northern Ireland, got hideous PTSD. Which um, we haven't talked about yet, how yeah. big PTSD and how well you've covered it. Yeah, I mean, he left, he left the army, um, uh, got no treatment at all, had a blackout and a flashback and woke up next to a dead body and he's now serving life uh, in prison um, with no prospect of parole. But he wrote this book urging veterans to get help and get treatment and don't try and ignore the fact that you've got a problem, um, which, you know, was manful of him at the very least. Uh, and I got a lovely email from a prison visitor who who is his prison visitor and we managed to get the book to him eventually and and he sent me a lovely note just to say he thought I'd, I'd smash the PTSD, which, yeah. you know, that that's about as high praise as it can get because he's suffered more than most, I think. Yeah. And that's obviously not to excuse the fact that, that you know, there's a family who lost somebody because of, no, of course his action. Not, no. So when, um, when you were writing it, obviously you've showed us um, Jimmy's book. Um, did his name influence the name of Jimmy? It's not not real. I mean, I, I, maybe subconsciously, maybe that. But not yeah. There are several. There's there. There also used to be a homeless guy in Newcastle, a very well known guy called Jimmy, who um, which used to ride around on the metro all day long and just float around. I mean, he's long dead now, um, mm. and bears no similarity to the Jimmy in my book. Um, but again, maybe a little subconscious influence that came in. I didn't realise. I was it was about a, a couple of months after it had been published. My brother-in-law um, was reading it, uh, and my brother-in-law is called Jim, and his uh, my sister-in-law is called Bev. Uh, and I hadn't right, okay. put that together at all that I'd use their names for my main. So Bev is wife. obviously Jimmy's ex-wife. <laughs> yeah. Street, so. yeah i know and i just didn't pick that up at all i don't know it, obviously subconscious is a weird thing so now i need to know if kate's name came from anywhere who is their daughter no i don't know no that was pretty random i think i'm sure okay. kate samantha from the course would say it was her influence over over the book because <laughs> she was probably sitting next to me when i was writing it um at, at uea uh but no i don't know where that's uh, my name's are entirely random i kind of and now and again, throwing an Arsenal footballer's name um, just to confuse people, surnames especially. So is that who you support, Arsenal? Yeah, yeah. I am an Arsenal fan, yeah. My agent, Ollie Munson, is a Spurs fan, which makes life interesting at times. <laughs> uh, but he stupidly puts it on his bio on Twitter, whereas I don't. So he didn't know that I was an Arsenal fan when he signed me. Um, and only found out in a pub when we were talking to somebody else. And he was horrified <laughs> on me. We have got less than five minutes left. Wow, really? Oh, yeah, that's gosh. absolutely okay. flown. Um, I've just scrolled down to the part where um, there are comments saying, oh my goodness, that sounds awesome. This is must be from when you were reading out your... Um... Oh, book four. Yeah. 
I'm trying to think of the word. But blurb, outline, plot, what? Pitch, uh, whatever. Pitch, thank blurb you. is, that blurb, was the word is was blurb, pitch, interchangeable, really. Yeah, I was after the word pitch and it just wasn't coming to me. <laughs> uh, Lucy says, oh my goodness, sounds awesome. Joseph sounds great. There's a Facebook user, I'm not sure who that is, who's got the, um, I'm not doing the emoji face, but the, the shocked face of the wow shocked face. Great. So, um, I've just got to write the thing now, that's all. I know. Steve says, wow, very, very nice. And it is. It does sound fantastic. How long do you think that will take to write? Is that a silly question? Is that how I've, already, I've, I've got about deadline? I've got about fifteen thousand words down already, um, okay. which I also sent to my editor just to convince her that this was the thing I was going to write. Um, so I don't know. I'm pretty quick. I would hope to have a first draft by Christmas, possibly, possibly. Wow. I don't really, I, I, I'm not sure I've got a deadline, probably March next year, I would guess is my deadline. Um, but I'm normally, I'm normally early, I normally get my stuff in well in advance, I think. See how it goes, I mean, I'm, when you're promoting books like One Way Street's coming out this week, I'm doing nothing writing-wise at the moment. Next week I'll get back to it, hopefully. Mm. And um, Dead End Street comes out in January. Yeah, they January. brought it forward. I, I, my books have moved all over the place because Man on the Street obviously was issued, was published um, during the well right at the start of lockdown, but was yeah, given. Was yeah, but it, it. I've been getting these soft launches, so Man on the Street was out in ebook and audiobook like three four months before that, uh, and they decided to continue that with One Way Street. So that's been out in ebook and audiobook mm, since yeah. end of October, but they then delayed One Way Street because the bookshops were closed. And they didn't want me to go through all that again. Um, so they put it back until June, which is why it's a bit late this year. But for some reason, um, they want Dead End Street to be brought forward. So it's January next year. Yeah, I think, again, because it was ready so early, I do tend to mm. get ahead of myself. So people need to save the Christmas book vouchers. Yeah, and it's not they're not doing the soft launch this time. They've decided that they'll just go straight out with the hardback next January. Steve's laughing at me, says, that was my own question, Sam, when I said he was texting his friends. I meant you were texting them your questions, Steve. To see <laughs> Steve's got no If he expects me to send my book to California, he's going to have to send me the postage. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I sent a book out to somebody in America last week. It cost me about 20 quid. It was outrageous. Steve, yeah, if, it, Steve it, if you've got a UK friend, I'll send it to him and he can send it to you. How about that? <laughs> Provided you've asked, final, who's going to choose the most? Recap of the books. Sam, I haven't seen all the questions. How am I supposed to choose? You can choose afterwards. That is, okay. actually, we won't put you on the spot. I would. Will I be able to you. see them though? Can I pick them up from the from the? Facebook yeah, you'll be page? able to see them on Facebook. Okay, great. I will. I it's will have a good look. That doesn't have permission to show the names, but they're just underneath our. Um, we're pinned okay. in the announcements, so you can find them there. Okay, fantastic. I will have a good look first thing in the morning and and pick a winner. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so thank you very much for joining us and thank you to all of the members and admins for questions. Steve says if he wins, he'll cover the postage. There you go. <laughs> oh, you better look in look into it, uh, Steve, and see how much it is. It's like more than the book, honestly. Oh, I'm sure he'll know. I'm sure he'll know. <laughs> he wouldn't have offered otherwise. But um give us a quick recap of the, the books just before we finish. Uh so the man on the street um, is the first in the series. A uh, homeless veteran suffering from PTSD sees a murder, but nobody believes him. Um, in book two, One Way Street, there has been a bizarre series of deaths uh, amongst runaway teenagers, which all seem to be involving a rogue batch of the uh, drug Spice. Yeah. Uh, one of Jimmy's friends is involved in the carnage that goes on, and he feels obliged to start to look and see what's happening. Uh, dead, I'm struggling here now. Dead End Street, uh, a group of right-wing vigilantes have been trying to remove the homeless from the streets of Newcastle, um, mostly by violent means. Um, Gadge wants to try and stop this, but Jimmy has moved on a bit and is has a job in a hostel and is trying to keep his nose clean and not get into trouble. So he... Uh, doesn't want to help Gadge. Gadge chases after two vigilantes, um, wakes up in an alley covered in blood, 
and there's a dead body next to him um, and Gadji's covered in his blood and is holding a murder weapon. So Jimmy has to dive in to try and um, clear Gadji's name, shall we say. That's um, dead entry. I look forward to reading that so much and I'm not happy that we're having to wait until January. Pull your finger <laughs> out, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I've had a lovely hour. It was a pleasure, a real pleasure. And thanks everybody for coming along. It was great.